welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here today to do my final March wrap up. Oh hi, thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. So if you've seen my wrap ups before, I tend to split them in two, one in the first half of the month and the other in the second half of the month. So if you missed that video, I will link it up above. But like with all of my end of the month wrap ups, I do go into my statistics for the month. So this month I read a total of 10 books. If you watched my TBR, I do go into kind of why I read less than I normally do. For me, 10 books a month is not my average, but I have been feeling a reading slump coming along. I also made a really big purchase in the month of March, so that might have to do with it. There was a lot of paperwork and stuff to do, so I didn't have that much time to read. So the average for the month was 3.65 stars out of 5, and that divided comes out to 1 5-star read, 6 4-star reads, 2 3-star reads, 0 2-star reads, and one one star read. My page count for the month relatively stayed the same even though I read less and I think that that is because I read a bunch of bigger books this month. So I read a total of 4,216 pages and that averaged out to about 136 pages per day. In regards to the author identity, I read four female authors this month and six male authors. In regards to audience, I read eight adult books and two young adult books. And then just in regards to format, three of the books I read this month were audiobooks. Two of the books I read were ebooks and five of the books I read were physical books from my TBR. So let's get into it. So the first book I finished in the second half of the month was Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey. I'm sorry to all my friends who love this book, this series, but this was trash. So this series takes place in the future where humanity has kind of conquered Earth and we are traveling to other planets to cultivate and this book mainly follows a man named Jim Holden who is a miner on the rings of Saturn and his crew kind of stumbles upon this abandoned ship and they kind of find something on that ship that they really wish they never saw and they're kind of swept up into this like galactic war. This book also follows another man named Detective Miller who is literally the probably worst character I've ever read in my entire life. He is a detective on earth on earth or the moon something like that and he's kind of tasked with finding this missing girl so i'm just gonna get into spoilers for like five seconds and then i'll get into other criticisms but detective miller he's a piece of garbage he is tasked with finding this girl whom we know is dead and detective miller knows that she's dead he saw her dead body with his own eyes and he creates this figure in his head of this woman who honestly read very young to me and he he's obsessed with her he becomes obsessed with her he calls her my julie um he thinks of her as like a lover it was just disgusting garbage trash i hated it so much into other valid criticisms welcome back james S. A. Corey is an author duo and it definitely you could definitely tell that this is an author duo the i'm assuming wrote one chapter one perspective each and the jim holden perspective was much more developed and i think it's just because jim holden was a more interesting character but it definitely read like two different stories i don't even think the detective miller story needed to be included like it just felt like two separate books the entire time that was kind of hacked together and they related in such a menial way like I don't even think the way the story went either one of the perspectives needed to be there I don't even want to talk about this book anymore I wish I did a vlog on it because I would have went into much more details about why I hated this I gave this one star this was the worst book I've read this year so far won't be surprised if it's the worst book I read all year I hated this if you enjoy this book I'm sorry maybe the tv show is better that's it that's all I'm done with this book. <laughs> then I needed to pick up a much happier book because I was just distraught with how awful Leviathan Wakes was. That I picked up My Love Story Volume 2 by Kazuni Kawahara and this was so cute. So this book series follows two friends, one named Takeo and one named Sunakawa, and they are the best of friends but total opposites. Takeo is this really big and sweet guy and Sunakawa is this very good looking, shy, brooding boy. And so most girls tend to go after Sunakawa but Takeo falls in love with this beautiful, sweet, wonderful girl named Yamato and Honestly, if you need to pick up something super wholesome, it's this. I really want to emphasize how much I love this series because I think that the themes in this are so well done. It really demonstrates the beauty of young love, but also the friendship of all the characters together and how they relate and how they are there and supporting each other. It also really emphasizes a healthy relationship 
for younger readers. Takeo and Yamato are absolutely adorable, but they also support and love each other in such a healthy manner. Takeo and Yamato show an understanding of each other's friends and are so, 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 so sweet to each other. It really warms my heart. I really recommend this if you want something sweet to read, just because I think it's absolutely adorable. I just bought the next two volumes in this series, so I'm super excited to pick it up. Love this gave this a four out of five stars. So the next book I read in the month of March was a bit of a difficult one and that is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This is also one of the books on my classics TBR which I will link up above but this book follows an aspiring poet named Esther Greenwood who has everything going for her. She has this really cool job in New York City but her struggles with depression kind of skyrocket her back to her home in Massachusetts. She is sent to see a psychiatrist by her mother and Esther finds herself in the path towards hospitalization. This was a really hard book to read and I think it's kind of semi-autobiographical and kind of touches upon what Sylvia Plath herself dealt with in her life. So I was never required to read this book in school and I was always like really weary to read it on my own in case it had some triggering content for me and I'm happy to say that while this was a really difficult read I ended up really enjoying it. I do want to give credit where credit is due and Maggie Gyllenhaal is the one who narrated the audiobook for this and I think she did an amazing job. She really captured the voice and spirit of Esther Greenwood and I found her voice, her actual voice, to be really calming and soothing as well and I think it fit perfectly for the book. I was also really surprised at how beautiful Plath's writing was. I had heard and known that she was a really talented writer but I didn't really expect to connect with the writing as much as I did. It was really engaging and lyrical and powerful and that is also because Esther was such an interesting main character. Her story and the way that this book was narrated was a bit meandering at times but I was never really confused about where we were. My one complaint is really about the ending and I'm not exactly sure why because I don't know how I would have handled writing the end of this novel. I don't know what I would have done but it just didn't sit right with me. Despite this ending though, which honestly you might even enjoy yourself, I don't know, I don't know you. The Bell Jar is a book that I will be thinking about for some time. I highly recommend it and I gave it a four stars as well. Then for the entire month of March I was buddy reading The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan with my friend Silvio and I'm really honestly surprised by how much I enjoyed this. I won't go too much into detail because I do have a vlog about it at this point in recording, I haven't edited it. If it's before I post this video, I will link it up above. I'm still indecisive about how I'm gonna rate this book. Is it a 3.5? Is it a four? I think I gave it a four in the vlog. We'll settle on a four here and I actually really enjoyed this. And then finally, the last book I read in the month of March was also finishing off a series for me and this is The Toll by Neil Schusterman. If you've been following my videos for a bit of time, like since November maybe, you'll know that I absolutely fell in love with the Ark of the Scythe series by Neil Schusterman. So I won't go into too much detail about what the third one is, but essentially this series follows a world where humans have conquered death. There are no diseases, there are no, there's no old age. The only way to die and to control the population growth is to be gleaned by a scythe. The scythes are these figures in society who choose at random who will go on specific days, but like with most powerful entities there is some corruption. This is also a world that is not controlled but kind of like overwatched by this figure called the Thunderhead and that's all I'll say. So while the first two books in this series were an instant five stars for me, the Toll and I we had some struggles. Oh, we matched. We matched today. Oh, that's cute. So this was a good resolution to the series, but it didn't quite have the charm that I was expecting from the first two novels. And by charm, that might mean um, the main character, Rowan, who wasn't in this enough for my taste. But alas, much like the other books, I really enjoyed the discussions that Schusterman integrates within his books. I really enjoyed how he ended this kind of like dysto perfect dystopian world and the way he concluded it and changed it over the course of the series and over the course of this book was really interesting. I would honestly even want to read a short story about what happens after the events of this book. So Neil, hit me up. Additionally, the discussions surrounding the AI in this one were really developed and were changing over the course of the book and I really liked that. I do 
think that my main gripe with the novel, like you can kind of guess from how I'm describing what's happening, is that there was a lot going on. Schusterman really opened up a lot of threads within the first two books and it took quite a bit to kind of tie them all together in a way that made sense. I just wish that either the third book was more focused, like there was less to tie up, or that there were four books in the series because that way he could have tied up everything in a more longer period of time. Despite this, I did like how this concluded and I can't believe I don't have anything left from this series that I really fell in love with in the last like six months and I'm sad about it. Like I said, enjoyed this, gave it a four star instead of a five, but it was still good. And that's it. These are all the books I read in the second half of March. Have you read any of these books? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell because it helps me and it makes me feel really good. You could also follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Everything's linked down below. And that's it. I don't know how to end these things, so I guess I will see you next time. Bye!